keeping hens. Yes, welcome back to a, a rather noisy rhubarb farm at Nether Langwith on the Nottinghamshire Derbyshire border. But actually, we are definitely, definitely in Nottinghamshire in this neck of the woods. And uh, later this month, you can learn all about hen keeping from Jenny Street, the managing director here. So, Jenny, what are you going to be teaching people? Um, we're going to be looking at uh, what sort of housing you need for the bird, uh, what sort of diseases can affect a bird, what the regulations are, what laws govern hen keeping, the feed you need, um, the way you collect the eggs, the way you watch them and look, look after them, and the way you handle them. How hands-on is it going to be? Uh, we're going to have three or four hens in the, in the room with the course participants, and we're going to show them how to handle the hens. Right. Because you've been showing me how to handle hens, and you're going to show me the right way to do it, and Luke has got the job of showing me the wrong way to do it. So Jenny, you, oh, is Luke going to do it first, the wrong way? Right, Luke, explain what you're doing, and explain um, what might happen if you do it this way. Uh, the wrong way is the other bird facing towards you, under your finger, which... So he's under your arm, and he's, he's, his head's popping out there. Yeah, you can hear him. Believe it or not, then we do catch a lot of people wanting to kiss the bird type of thing, and then before you know it, the picture died. Ouch! So rather undignified it may be, Jenny, but the way that you pick them up is to... You put both hands around the chicken. And that chicken, they're all running away. Oh, hang on, we've got one. Here's a chicken. Yeah. You loop your fingers in their legs and you put them under your arm facing backwards. Now I've got their legs firmly between my fingers. They can't struggle and they're much, it's much more difficult for them to get away. And they're calmer because they're facing backwards, they can't see me and I'm safer. So basically the bottom is pointing out. That's right. And when I put... <laughs> the bottom is the same as Ben says, Luke. put her down again, I've still got her legs and she's calm about it. The wind's getting up a bit. Let's, let's wander back around here because I want to talk eggs because of course that is the thing that most lots of people are after is to get the eggs. Let's have a wee look in the, what's this called? Nest box. The nest box. Let's have a look in the nest, nest box, box and see what's in. We do these between one to three times a day. There was nothing in that one. Oh dear. Failed. Okay. Let's have a look in this other one. Now then. Oh, there's one. Yeah. This is a good sign. There she is on the nest box. All you do, lift her up. Not, like I said, they handle quite a lot. And there's an egg. It won't be her egg. It'll be the per the hen that was before her has laid that egg. Oh, you know, because she won't be staying there. Once she's laid, she'll be announcing it to the world and she's off. Right. Do they taste better, these eggs? I think they taste better. These, these hens are free range. They can come and go. They can pet. They can have dust baths, which is really important for a hen. Because whereas we go into water and wash ourselves to get clean, Hens run dust and, and dirt through their feathers, and that helps keep lice and mites at bay. I'm sure this will come out during the course, but is it expensive to keep hens? Um, you probably just about cover your costs with the feed and the eggs that you get, but of course the outlay is a bit expensive. So if you looked at it in those terms, uh, it's difficult to get the money back from the outlay, but it's the fun of keeping hens and the satisfaction you get of having live animals at home. And you have to accept, I presume, that part of your garden is going to disappear because they eat everything. They do. Uh, you'd normally have a hen coop and a run so that that would stop them going round your garden. But, for example, at my house, I have a hen coop and a run, but when I'm in the garden, they can roam freely. And then um, I have to make sure that none of my plants are there to be, to be scratched up. So, generally, they're free in the garden between September and April and not in the summer mention foxes. Yeah, foxes are an ever-present danger in this country and all runs need to be as fox-proof as possible. But um, I myself, after eight years of keeping hens successfully and keeping a fox out, had all my hens massacred last April. So it, it can happen and um, it's an ever-present danger. I want to be quiet now, Jenny. When they stop laying, do you eat them? Um, I personally don't eat mine. Um, I, I am a hobby keeper. Here at Rhubarb Farm, we're keeping them for commercial purposes and we sell the eggs to generate income on the farm. And uh, after a certain period of time, we'll pass them on. But at home, I generally keep mine even if they've stopped laying because they're pets.
Jenny, Luke, thank you. If you fancy finding out about hens, the course here at Rhubarb Farm is being held on Wednesday, the 15th of April, from half past nine until 2.30. As Jenny said, it's £10 on the day, £8 if you pay in advance. Nigel, Jenny, Luke, thank you very much indeed. There we are. I can't believe that. The two of them there talking about eating the poor chickens. And it's like within earshot of them. They can hear, you know, they have feelings.